hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody, to WWTA News. I thank you all for returning again for another episode. Yes, this is another episode where we'll be going through some news. Yeah, we're going to go through some news. Um, So, uh, I don't know. I'm just glad you all came back. If you uh, haven't hit that like button, I'd like for you to hit that like button because, you know, I would love more people to catch this stuff and uh, definitely be able to pay attention to what's going on around them because I feel like we all might get left out if we don't stay uh, informed about what's going on. So, all right, so welcome back to WWTA News, and here we're talking about crypto, so let's just dive right in. So there's an article. It says, South Africa market infrastructure, Samos, goes live on the ISO 20022 system. Uh, this article is from December 14th. Uh, so pretty important here. It says, rich data is fast becoming the standard language for global payments, with a number of markets having already adopted the ISO 20022 for high value and instant payments. And major economies aren't far behind, with many set to complete their migrations before 2025. Uh, so I'll stop there and I'll say this. We do know that um, SWIFT intended to uh, November of this year uh, have all banks operating on this new system because this is the system that they're using. But, of course, uh, Europe, London, whatever said that this was impossible for them to do at the time. They needed a little more time. So SWIFT said, OK, we'll push the date, the, the timeline to March 2023 that you banks are going to need to be able to run this stuff. And then. Uh, uh, you know, of course, we saw the post where the United States was saying that they'll be effectively able to run all this and operate correctly by 2025. So no shocker here. Right. This article goes on to say payments market infrastructures are an important part of this transition and their communities are catalysts for adoption. Our dedicated adoption program for MI support high value PMIs on their journey. With real-time gross settlement systems adopting the ISO 20022 for high-value payment plus under the program, it runs alongside our ISO 20022 program for cross-border payments and reporting, uh, which is actively helping to support banks and vendors in their readiness for and adoption of the standard. Now, let's get that one more time. It says it is actively helping to support banks and vendors banks and vendors right those sellers in their readiness for and adoption of this new standard so what what, what do we see there this, you don't need me for this but what do you see there it says actively helping to support banks and vendors vendors are just stores banks are you know that cross between and so banks move their money through that cross between or ACHs so what what it, no guessing here expect in the coming future for your stores to be accepting these payments all right operating on the ISO messaging system um, 20022 now it goes on uh, migration to a rich data format it says the South African Reserve Bank operates regulates supervises and oversees the country's national payment system and it also and is also responsible for policy making it acts as an intermediary uh, or settlement agent enabling financial institutions to make payments to each other. And so, again, we're talking about banks being able to shoot money left and right, settling instantaneously uh, on this messaging system. So banks are definitely going to be using this because it's perfect for them. All right. It continues with uh, the South African Reserve Bank owns and operates the RTGS system for the country. The South African Multiple Option Settlement SAMOS system on 17th uh, September SAMOS completed its migration on the 17th of September SAMOS the South African Multiple Option Settlement System completed its migration to the ISO 20022 rich data messaging system. Uh, this represents a huge step towards modernizing the country's payments ecosystem with the new global messaging standard being adopted by its domestic RTGS system 
participate uh, participant banks and other financial MIs in simple terms this means the South African financial community is now live with the ISO 20022 uh, and let's get that again new global messaging standard system all right that is major um you know you're at this channel for a reason and these are the things you want to be talking about with your family members friends and loved ones you know articles like this it's the new global payment system we just saw and read that it's for banks and um vendors uh, or retailers and you're going to play a large part of that without even knowing because behind the scenes your money is going to be swapped out to make sure that all this stuff works fast efficient and easily and again they're going to have to have certain currencies in order to do this these are known as the ISO 20022 um, um, compatible uh, ISO uh, com compatible cryptos that exist right now and it previous videos there's a list that you can see uh that you know help us understand that right all right now in our next article it says block tower credit and maker dow to fund 220 million of real world assets through centrifuge it says we're incredibly excited to close the year with the official launch of a 220 million dollar fund with our partners block tower credit and maker dow the executive vote passed on Sunday, December 11th, and Maker will deploy four vaults to fund investments in real-world assets originated by Block Tower and issued on-chain through Centrifuge. This stands to be the largest on-chain investment in real-world assets to date, with Maker prov uh, providing $150 million of senior capital and Block Tower providing $70 million of junior capital. It also marks the first institutional credit fund to bring their collateral collateralized lending operations on chain uh the big story here lending on the blockchain uh is it a lot of money no not yet it's only drops in a bucket but nonetheless you're looking at the technology lender lenders moving essentially onto the blockchain or them showing how the technology will work for lenders that decide to move onto the blockchain all right so Block Tower Capital, a uh, crypto fund manager in the United States, North America, says Block Tower Capital is a crypto fund manager located in Stamford, uh, Connecticut, United States, North America. SWFI has four personal contacts available um, for you to see. There's four contacts. It says they manage uh, uh, seven hundred and forty four million dollars worth of assets. OK, so, OK, th th this is, you know essentially you've got to have value to become a lender right you've got to have monetary value so that you can lend people uh, money and then of course they got to pay you back with interest you get into these contracts these contracts we know are um, bonds these are the same bonds that get sold uh, whether it's federally secured bonds or it's just generic public bonds which still get sold on the market yada da 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 that's how all that craziness works uh, from my understanding I uh, don't believe I'm wrong but based on my understanding that's just how all all that stuff works so it's interesting to see that we're seeing lending coming on to the blockchain uh, uh, in in this manner or in this fashion so we can only look to the future and see that we're going to see more of this happening uh, on a larger scale again these are just drops in the bucket I'm sure it's just to prove the point you see there block tower capitals details uh, block tower capital legal name it's in North America it's the United States it's a crypto fund manager meaning that uh, they hold assets of crypto crypto assets just proving that it could be done I would only assume all right next article Argentine province of San Luis to issue a dollar pegged stable coin and local art NFTs I don't know about the NFTs but the stable coin obviously it's got to run on the network right all right, so it says San Luis, an Argentine province, has taken its first steps to include blockchain-based tech as part of its digital digitalization push. The legislators of the province recently approved a bill designated with the number, uh, uh, what is this, V111 or what is this, 56788-1085-2022 called Financial Innovation for Investment and Social Economic Development. Uh, that introduces blockchain as a tool to potentiate the development of several fields in the province, including generating value and improving auditing processes, right? So, 
Uh, you know, obviously, when we deal in, in stable coins, which is why we're going to see a lot more of this happening, it, it allows them to get on blockchain and to simplify all this stuff. This is why we look at, I don't even want to call the names out. This is why we look at certain things like the ones we know that run on the ISO messaging system uh, because of the potentiality of that technology. All right. It goes on to say, as part of this law, San Luis contemplates the issuance of its own dollar peg stablecoin. The token denominated San Luis Savings Digital Asset will be available to all citizens of the province and will be 100% collateralized in liquid financial assets of the provincial state. Uh, and again, I'll stop there and I'll say this is why stable coins are going to be very important in the future. And, and, and not that the story here is the stable coin but the real story behind the scenes is that stable coins are going to run uh, nine times out of ten on the ISO messaging system and they're going to run on particular blockchains that's the major story which is behind the scenes for me and that's why I'm sharing this article it goes on to say it is still unknown if this digital asset will be used as a currency or will merely function as a kind of debt bond as the rule rule set uh, for this law has still not been created yeah so it doesn't matter um, what they decide to use it for the fact that it still remains that it'll operate on blockchain and that's the biggest uh, story here so that's all I care about next article it says Sweden central bank preparing for e-corona e-corona a central bank digital currency all right Sweden Central Bank, Rick's Bank, is preparing to introduce a possible central bank digital currency, the e-krona, according to a December 15th statement. Rick's Bank said that it is ready to be able to issue an e-krona if Sweden's legislature, the Riksdag, chooses to proceed with the asset's creation. The central bank said it is therefore working to prepare for an ensuable e-krona. The central bank noted that an e-krona could complete excuse me yeah compliment excuse me cash as transactions become increasingly digital so they're looking at it to complement not swap it out right it goes on to say in addition a cbdc such as the e krona would reduce reliance on private payment services and match the value of the swedish krona obviously because it brings things on the blockchain and that's where most banks and businesses are going to want to operate for that instantaneous um completion of the transactions and they don't have to trust you or your money they can trust the the, the, the networks and the exchanges because they can swap everything out so that's amazing in itself you know obviously we're watching more onboarding of the technology all right rick's bank said that it is examining ways in which an e-krona can be used on a technical level specifically it considers ways to distribute the central bank digital currency to the public and determine which participants can be involved with the asset the bank is also exploring legal matters related to the e-krona such as data protection financial secrecy and asset classification furthermore it has sought input from various sources in 2022 through a dialogue form and a request for information so they're nine times out of ten they're going to push ahead with this because obviously all nations all countries are doing this because of what has to happen in 2023 and at at the end time 20 by 2025 it goes on to say, despite apparent progress on the matter, Rick's Bank made it clear that Sweden's legislature, uh, Rick's DAG, has not yet decided whether to introduce an e-krona. It noted that the government began investigating whether to issue the CBDC in December 2020. The investigation results have been delayed from November 30th, 2022 to March 31st, 2023. And obviously, I see those numbers and I think about SWIFT messaging system who intended November of 2022 and pushed their date back to March of 2023. So uh, nine times out of 10, you're going to see this all happen. You're going to see Sweden go to whether it be an e-corona or a, um, or have them start using the stable coin, possibly even something like USDC. You know, it is what it is. I'm just saying it's here. We're reading it. We can, we can pretty much figure this out. It's not rocket science. All right, look at that. We have gotten to the end of this episode. If you all stuck it out and got to this end of the to the end of this episode, just so you can get all this information, I hope 
I hope that you gleam some insight of the possible future. Well, not even possible future. It is actually the future. We've got dates and timelines on all these things. So I hope you can use this to help get family members, friends, and loved ones to understand what's going on around them and that you can make uh, better decisions going forward in the future for you, your family, and loved ones. So I will catch you all in the next episode. And I thank you for sticking to the end. Till next time.